So this is not a comprehensive list of features, but it's a few of the features that I've been exploring in the last little while. So QGIS has a huge amount of functionality. I'm just scratching the surface. It's a lot to pack into five minutes. I'm gonna talk as fast as I can to get through it. User profiles. So as you use QGIS over time, you add plugins, you change your toolbar positions, maybe you use dark mode. Uh, all these things are stored in your user profile. So if you ever wanna temporarily reset to factory defaults, uh, you can create a new user profile in the GUI and get a new start. So it's perfect for showing new users how to work with QGIS and it's also useful for troubleshooting. Okay, Easter eggs. So QGIS has a few of these pieces of hidden functionality. This one's actually kind of useful. If you type the word world into the coordinates bar, it adds a layer of countries of the world. Uh, this gives you context for other data you bring in and it's also a vector layer so you can immediately work with styling without having to find your own example data sets. Okay, free base maps. So you may already know you have access to the OpenStreetMap base map uh, by default through XYZ tiles, but you can also add other free base maps. So all you need is the URL to the base map service. This example here is uh, Bing Satellite, and there are many more available on the web. Okay, the locator bar. So if you've never used the locator bar, it's that little search bar in the bottom left of the QGIS window, it's worth checking out. You can easily access pretty much all the functionality of QGIS with just a few keystrokes. So one particularly useful function is finding features in the active layer. Just type F and an attribute value, and it'll zoom you to a matching feature. Geolocation, uh, another nifty feature in the locator bar is geolocation, using the OpenStreetMap-based Nominatum Geocoder web service. So just type angle bracket and a search term, and it'll give you a list of uh, matches. And just choose one, it'll zoom you right to it. Web services, WMS and WFS are open OGC standards and there are millions of web servers worldwide providing data in this format. For example, Data WA. If you can find a URL in Data WA, you can connect to the service in QGIS. Uh, once you have the link, you can create a new WMS or WFS connection and bring in the data as layers. So you're pulling in a live version of the data from the source, you don't need to worry about keeping your own copy up to date. So open source, open data, open standards, all in one place. Speaking of open data, you can download OpenStreetMap data as vector data and use it for mapping and analysis. So in this example, we're using the Quick OSM plugin to fetch all the buildings in the town of Broome as vector features with a full set of attributes. So because it has attributes, we can use them to style and label the data. We can also get things like opening hours, phone numbers, web links, and more. Uh, bonus, if you spot a typo or a missing feature, you can fix it. So in this case, we can see the bank building of Broome, uh, Commonwealth Bank building is missing. So with the Quick OSM plugin, uh, there's a shortcut to open the same location in JOSM, which Sam just mentioned, so we can easily edit OSM. So in this case, we're adding the missing bank building. So while we're in there, we can also fix up other things we spot, like the building just down to the bottom left that's uh, not quite square. So when we finish these edits in JOSM, they go straight into OSM. All right, so Ed was talking about attribute form widgets earlier. So adding attribute data manually can be tedious and error prone. So the default behavior for the attribute form is a free text field. By typing it in, you can make spelling mistakes and case errors. So QGIS gives you something called widgets that you can use to customize the attribute form. Using the value map widget, you can create drop downs, so you can select values from a list. So if your list of values is 150 items long, it's still fairly awkward. Fortunately, the value relation widget lets you take it another step further. You can filter down your drop down list by using the contents of another attribute. So in this case, we're filtering uh, with, a, with a lith category, which makes our drop down list of lith codes much shorter. So this is all achieved by configuring widgets in the attributes form, and if you're attending the QField workshop tomorrow, you'll spend some time working with these. New stuff. Uh, so new in QGIS uh, 3.22, came out just a few days ago. One of the exciting new features is annotation layers. So you can create annotation directly in the map. This is handy for fine tuning your cartography with one-off features and labels. Uh, it's the very first release of this feature, so it's gonna get better and better. This was built in Australia by Nile Dawson North Road Tumor. Future is bright. Much work is being done <laughs> on additional enhancements to QGIS, such as this crowdfunding campaign to build on QGIS' expanding 3D and point cloud capabilities. One more, coming soon, open log for drill hole visualization and editing, uh, relevant to the Perth community. We can give some credit to Perth's very own Grant Boxer. 
uh, who put, provided a lot of the energy and input that got this particular project started. Cutest Future Frenzy done. Thank you very much.